Hi, Misha here, and since I was a little uh, scarce, a little light with black boxes recently, I thought I'd give you a, a bonus one this week, because Merry Christmas, and Happy New Year eventually too, or you know, Happy Hanukkah, anything like that, it doesn't really matter, the idea is the same, it's what's in a word, what's in a name, in different languages, different things matter. The important thing is, hopefully, this year, 2021, unlike 2020, more of us are able to spend time with uh, friends, family, loved ones. Uh, last year, as I've said, we not only were here by ourselves, we were literally quarantined right at Christmas, so that we didn't see anyone, and we couldn't. That was not good. About the best thing that came out of it was uh, shopped on Aikens and took advantage of their Christmas sale. <laughs> Didn't have a whole lot else to do. Food got a little scarce around the house. But that was this year, and this is this year. You, you might have guessed. That's why it's this year, not last year. So, hopefully uh, this year Christmas is going better. For all of us, me, you, everyone in between. Any uh, any interesting stories so far? Um, anyone get a gift or give a gift that they were excited about this year? Anything to talk about? Toss her in the comments. With that, uh, yeah, we'll just we'll chat for a little bit. I we'll have a little time here, and go from there. Well, the last time I recorded a black box a couple of days ago, it was rather cold out here, about 20, 25 degrees. Now it's warmer, about 40 degrees. And I kind of don't, I'd almost rather it be colder. I don't like the, like, 35 to 45 range, because it's, it's cold enough, but the air is still damp. It gets below 30 or so, the air gets drier, and it doesn't seem as cold to me. That's a pretty well-known fact, and countries where snow is a common thing like Russia but anywhere else because it just especially when you do get snow on the ground it does tend to draw that moisture out of the air so you might actually die of hypothermia or frostbite faster but you probably feel more comfortable doing it here in the south Arkansas and even further south like Louisiana it gets very I guess balmy is the right word it's cool, but it's the damp. It's just like kind of being surrounded by a wet blanket. It's cold. It's not pleasant, especially on your feet. I hate when your feet feel cold and clammy. Blech. But yeah, it warmed up right around the holiday here. And so at least it looks like it's good travel weather in this region. No snow or major rain. So far, they're calling for sun, so hopefully that continues so people can travel safely. Yeah, um, yeah. the first couple of days of this week were interesting. Work was pretty busy, and uh, happy to report that the sales on the JDI guns, the Swiss SIGs, picked up. When I first got them right after Thanksgiving, aside from you know, a handful of pre-orders that I had, things were kind of quiet the first week or two. But I guess it was just people kind of learning about them, saving up money. Because this week, I had a number of people contact me wanting to buy, and they didn't want to do layaway. They they were perfectly happy just to pay outright. So did what I could. It's a good time to catch me before the end of the year, before inventory, before all that. I don't mind moving something along quick and easy just to make a token amount of money. If I have to sit on it six months, then I feel like I kind of need to make uh, make more. Uh, speaking of guns and stuff, kind of one neat thing that happened that I can discuss now that I couldn't in the last black box, just in case, was uh, a, a gun that came my way. Uh, a family member of mine, who's basically my sister, uh, quite a bit younger, but um, uh, had just mentioned to me not even a week ago, maybe? Not, not even a week that could I find her a 22 long rifle and her job she she works outdoors and with for the state she was thinking it would be a good idea to have a 22 long rifle for vermin but also to teach 
students on how safety and shooting and all that and asked her well bolt action or some auto she said uh, bolt action preferably and I said uh, iron sights or you know pick rail and she said yeah kind of both but be nice to be able to put a red dot on it okay so I started looking checked around a few places but you know this close to the holidays a lot of stuff like that's out of stock well a gentleman came by on Monday to do some unrelated business I had needed to give him a check and he picked up a couple of things and he used to uh, run a gun store and when he retired the person who bought his gun store didn't want the majority of his inventory so he did 4473s on several hundred even a couple of thousand guns maybe and took them and put them in storage because yeah the guy didn't want them you had to do something with them and i just happened to mention my sister was looking for something and he said would a ruger american do and i said yeah sure that's a bolt action it has iron sides but also has a uh, it's drilled and tapped to mount a rail um, price is right and the stock can be set for short or long for kids you know, and it's got synthetic stock, which is good for all weather. So great. Um, yeah, you got any? Yeah, I have some that are you know new stock when you retired the gun shop. And I thought, well, great. Yeah, bring one over. I said that this should do fine. And he does live uh, a good way is up the road. And I said, probably not. But is there any chance you could get it here by Christmas? And he said, sure. I'm bringing it tomorrow. And I said, oh, you don't need to do that you know it's not that urgent because no I, i'll be nearby anyway i don't mind and he said what else am i gonna do i'm retired so um we made a plan to meet at 11 that morning i set my alarm got up and went outside to check the mail and the, the rifle was just on the door turns out he had uh, his plans had shifted and he was already done at 8 30 or 9 in the morning and instead of waiting around for an hour <laughs> for me to be available he just left it in my porch and you know said it'll catch me on the flip side to work out a payment or trade for it so that was neat so that i didn't expect to to have that find but i'll take it in fact a lot of gifts this year kind of fell into place like that found some pretty interesting things for people um, so hopefully everyone enjoys them but i i, I like getting fun and useful gifts i don't like just doing that if, if possible but this year is the first time in a couple of years i've been able to indulge in and actually take time and buy gifts and it was great I, I used to like really doing that but the last couple of years again last year we didn't even meet for christmas because of everything and uh before that i just been so busy with work and everything else it's just it's been hard but this year i get to do it a little more and uh that's great that's always a, a nice thing so over on the main Mishiko channel, I've been putting out a series of videos talking about me getting into guns, kind of my early guns, my thoughts on them. And uh, the reason right now is I, I really did pick up my first couple of guns right after Christmas, and it was exactly 20 years ago. And the, the you know anniversary of it just seemed fitting, and I was kind of in a retrospective mood i have been a lot the little second half of this year sometimes i feel like before you can move forward you need to really reflect on where you've come from and to me it helps it's 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 not bitter to me in fact it's it's kind of maybe a little bittersweet but i like looking back it, it makes me feel generally speaking good but anyway yeah so a lot of memories associated right around this time of year with firearms as my first ones and then you know subsequently earlier ones as i was building my collection and how i i knew nothing and just kind of built it from there and was oftentimes just very fortunate in the people i met the situations i found myself in that kind of thing but uh, yeah i've been doing that over on the main channel by this point when this video goes up i will have probably published the second video i'm probably going to do four maybe five haven't quite decided yet 
And the, the purpose, aside from just sharing with people over the holiday week between Christmas and New Year, uh, I figure people, if they're visiting family, they might need a 30-minute break and then hang out with me. Or if they're not able to see family this year or they're in a foreign country and can't come home to see family, they can hang out with me too. Anyway, I'll be here. People need me. If not, no harm, no foul. But also, as I mentioned in a couple of past black boxes, for 2022, I want to focus more on YouTube. Not to the extent that I cut out my day job completely of you know, dealing in guns. But, yeah, I, I would like to do more. But that's going to require you know more fundage. Uh, paying people to drive me places. I'd really like to be able to buy plane tickets to go places. I, I get invited to go places. It's just, you know, the money. So I'm kind of doing these videos as a Patreon awareness drive or fundraiser thing. Just to see if people want to sign up. If they if they don't, that that's fine. I get it. It's difficult. And if they do, greatly appreciated. But, you know, just a, a buck is fine. It just, it just it helps. And uh, also trying to work on things with YouTube a bit. And would like to pay to have a couple of videographers and... Uh, artists maybe do like make a logo or a splash page no, nothing crazy no music still pe keeping it being me but just you know make it 10 percent a little more professional that's all but again that costs money if anyone has looked at what those people get paid per hour at least for a halfway decent one who will deliver product on time it's expensive um you're looking at 70 80 bucks an hour and then the same thing goes if you want to do like a website. Look what a basic website costs you now. Several thousands of dollars. So trying to figure out a way maybe to kind of work with that. And uh, I don't want money for nothing. So the seems fair to me if I, if I increase the output and try to do a little more. People feel like they want to donate. That That's fine. You know, this is how it is. And if not, no harm, no foul. Again, I, I really... This didn't start off as a job, and it really isn't even now. It just started off as something I enjoy doing, and I still enjoy doing it. It's been a little difficult keeping it going throughout 2021, but it's also the flip side of that. The fact that I have makes it all the more rewarding, all the sweeter. So, you know, more stress, but also more reward. I'll, I'll uh, you know, I'll take that. That's just kind of how life goes. But that's what's going on on the main channel over there. And I did mention over there in a video or two that I'll be doing this black box and a few other things. Inviting people to come over here to the Misha channel. And because here I've been doing lately uh, a lot with military uh, armor, vehicles, tanks, and what have you. And I'm changing gears there a bit too. When it comes to aircraft, I've covered pretty much every major nation US, Britain, France Russia, China, Germany and a few minor ones too and Israel and other things but I've just run out of aircraft uh, there's just not much new coming in from Corgi and Hobby Master because of international situations. Also those models the newer Hobby Masters and stuff, they're getting very expensive and it, it has a lot to do with the increased transport costs the increased uh, labor and material costs so that's when I decided to switch over to tanks because they're still relatively affordable at least most of them and to begin with I did about a dozen and a half videos on Russian armor started off with the T-26 and worked way up to the T-34 and wrapped back around to the T-18 the first one and uh, T is the T-54, but I haven't quite got there yet. I figured I'd take a little break. Had a lot of fun with the BMPs and the BTRs because those are among my favorites. But next, I'm moving, I believe, into British. Thought about doing American next, but I don't know. Kind of just felt like doing British. Because British tanks, they're definitely not the best. Certainly not prior to World War II and World War II. But they are unique. They are interesting. They are distinctly British. They're just a very different mindset from American and Russian. And what's kind of interesting, the the American tank 
you know, in, in World War One, we only had a couple. The, uh, the, the Model 1917, the PT-17, but that was a small little tank. We didn't have a lot of the big gargantuan tanks. And so we had a pretty good clean slate. We had the M2, of course the M3 came on and uh, ended up with the M26 and the very famous M4. But we did tend to prefer either light or medium tanks and didn't get too heavy into heavy tanks. Although we would keep making them for a while, like the M103. We like the medium tank and the light tank concept. And, and Russia was very much the same. They toyed around with like the, uh, the KVs. And in fact, when they did want to put a heavy gun on a tank, they, they did. My God, they put some of the biggest guns early in the war. But it was the success of the T-34 that really convinced them of the legitimacy of the medium tank, which kind of led to them inadvertently creating the main, uh, the main battle tank. Well, in Britain, because they had developed the tank in World War I and Winston Churchill was so instrumental in that, they had a little bit of a conservative mindset. So when you look at 1930s British tanks, they look a lot like World War I tanks. At least you can see the, the relationship. They were relatively slow, but very heavily armored. Great if you're attacking a fixed fortification, going at trenches, pretty crappy if you're fighting something like Blitzkrieg. But um, I, I, I think that's why they're just quite interesting. And I will probably start with the Churchill, because it really is where old meets new. You, you start to move into things like the, uh, like the Com Cromwell and the Comet. Because the British, they, they started doing what they called infantry tanks, slow heavily armed and armored and then they had cruiser tanks which were fast and lighter armed and armored still not pathetic but yeah and ultimately it would be the cruiser that w would win out they would fold the lines in together and that would be how they would get their essential main battle tank with the uh, centurion and uh, the challenger and all that so yeah we'll get into that a little bit and then We'll get to Germans, don't worry. There will be tigers and panthers galore. But Germans are so hard. They're, they they didn't just make thousands or tens of thousands of one basic model like the Russians. They made hundreds of one model, and then they'd change it up completely. They just they never could leave well enough alone in some extent. So that's a bit more of an undertaking that I've had energy this season to do because of work. But if things slow down in the winter... Yeah, we'll get a little more of the Germans. Because, <laughs> you know, you, you got to have Germans. I'd love to find some good Japanese tanks, but as with many Japanese things, they're kind of left in the dust. And, of course, it doesn't help that Japan themselves didn't use tanks a whole lot. They had, what, the, the Type 95? Was there a Type 97 as well? I feel like there was. And, of course, they had the Type 2. But they were light tanks, scout tanks, um... They had a couple of medium tanks, but they really didn't have many heavy tanks, but which makes sense considering where they were fighting and in the beginning who they were fighting. When more aircraft do come in, we will return to them. I just don't have anything right now, unfortunately. But we'll get back to it eventually there. And uh, still doing Eagle Moss videos when and if they come in. They were doing pretty good there for a minute in November. And then they haven't shipped anything in December at all, which is kind of sad. I was hoping they might have kind of a big blitz of a bunch of back orders. But c'est la vie. Kind of coming back around and ending with firearms chat again, which is where all this kind of started with me. As I've been doing those other videos, it is kind of funny how it, how it all started. It, it just started as a lark, just buying one gun because... Growing up, I always wanted a PPK. And so a friend said, hey, there's one in the store. So we, we went and got it. And I didn't anticipate more than that. But I thought, okay, well, he, you know, they had a Mosin too, and I thought it was kind of interesting. So picked that up as well. But that really was about to be it. That thing is going to pop now and bug me. But, um... 
Yeah, sorry about the squeaking. Arr, stop it. So I'm gonna do something here to shame it. It's because it's got it was warm, then it got cold. Now it's warm again, so it's doing all weird things. I need to oil it. That's just how it goes. Anywho, so that helps a bit. I just basically just had a little disposable income at the end of a semester, and I don't know, I just did. I the, the earliest guns I bought, the first, I don't know, six or seven, had no rhyme or reason. But that was kind of what was nice 20 years ago. They were affordable enough that you could do that. Now, of course, adjusting for economy, a dollar was worth a lot more back then. But still yet, they were cheaper. Because there wasn't the online demand. It just wasn't like it is today. And as I, I realized that throughout 2002 and 2003, I was very much just kind of buying what caught my fancy. Reflecting back, though, it was 2004 that I think I really got, if not serious, that I, I realized it was a kind of a permanent thing. I think my family realized that, too. I think at first they thought it was just a passing fad, as we all do. I think we all kind of get into things for a bit, mess around for a few months or a year, then stop or sell off or whatever. But no, I think by '04 I realized it was more than just that, and that I really enjoyed it. And then the assault weapons ban sunset at the end of that year, and that opened up not just AKs and NARs, but it also allowed more imports to come in, uh, namely the VZ-82, but other higher capacity pistols. And this is around the same time a lot of these old combat militaries were finally going to uh, to newer guns. They they had kind of held on to their combat gear even after the end of communism for for a while. They either didn't need to replace it yet because a lot of them had bought built bought new stuff in the 80s and so in the 90s it was still brand new some of it was still coming off the production line the polish tantal is a great example even though they weren't real keen on uh sorry there if i rubbed you on the mic they weren't real keen on keeping the tantal in 545 they were still buying them brand new but by the 21st century with the war on terror and just the changing uh, landscape, they were uh, able to kind of fund things like that. So you started to see the old stuff being surplused out. And yeah, it was pretty affordable. And keep on with it, and it was a lot of fun. Nevertheless, 2005, 2006, I was still primarily focusing on my day job and being a teacher and, and all that and I was traveling quite a bit guns were just a hobby but I noticed I was showing more and more interest in those and less and less than just the regular stuff so it was only really a matter of time and then I started helping out around that time at a friend's shop part-time because he wasn't really computer literate and uh yeah kept on from there it's kind of nice at the time I didn't have much money so I had to be very uh, very discerning what I bought because if I bought something today I wouldn't have money to buy another one for weeks months so that meant that I read I researched and that's kind of the basis of what knowledge I have is, is being very careful with what I picked up and just meeting people and conversing and shooting and overall just interacting. And then of course I got married and my wife knew my hobby and what have you and there was never any friction there. And then it essentially just became a job and has stuck ever since. I did sell off a bit of my collection to help start the business and every once in a while, I, even today, we'll go in there and pull a personal gun put it in the store to sell if we need something to sell just like inventory or if I want to buy something else I usually fork out one of my personal guns to balance the scales 
in uh, 2014 we bought this house I did sell most of my Valmets mm, painful but worth it because house you know if you can get rid of a couple of guns and end up basically having a house it's just what it is priorities and of course in 2020 during COVID I pulled out a few AKs and a couple other handguns and stuff just to have inventory and I have replaced some of those this year in 2021 others I've decided I guess I just really didn't need just kind of depends for example I sold my Burger and Tomat uh, TP9 and then this year replaced it with a Burger and Tomat uh, APC9 the SCW and generally speaking I consider that a trade up all things both are cool guns but couldn't really justify both. But the airplanes and the tank videos here, they go hand in glove with the firearms history. Now the sci-fi videos, Star Trek, Battlestar Galactica, even some Star Wars, that's more indulging my inner child. I always like space and sci-fi. Literally, since I can remember, four or five years old, astronauts interested me. So that's just me being me. That's like me remember being a little kid thinking when I'm an adult and I can buy all the stuff I want, I'm going to do it. And that's me doing it. So it's kind of fulfilling what I always wanted to do. Yeah. If I ever in an afterlife meet my young self, he will be happy I did this just because it's been fun. And truth is you can't take life too serious you gotta have some fun and, and goofiness and of course it's none of that stuff's expensive in the grand scheme of things ah well we'll see I'll, I'll try to think up some new topics and, and things for this uh, for this channel for tw 2022 as well and hopefully I'll be able to, be able to give you some road trip videos because those are always fun for all of us well, I've rambled on long enough. I need to uh, get a few things done here before it's too late. Eat a bite. So, hope you enjoyed this Christmas black box. Again, I do wish you a happy holiday, Merry Christmas, and hope everyone is doing what they want to do, having their best day possible. I appreciate you tuning in. If you could, please do like, share, subscribe, and check out some of my other videos if you have time. Or not, or whatever. This is Misha. Catch you very soon. Next time.